Welcome to worship at Our Savior's Lutheran in Salt Lake City, Utah on this Palm Sunday. We enter together into Holy Week, into the passion of our Savior Jesus Christ that leads us to the cross, to a day of waiting, and to the mystery of the empty tomb. I'm Pastor Bergette Weir, and it's a joy to worship together today. A few announcements for our time together. You can find our bulletin on our website, oslcslc.org. In the bulletin, you'll not only find our order of worship, but a home devotional for this Holy Week, as well as our calendar of events. There are many things happening this Holy Week, including Stations of the Cross here in the building. If you would like to sign up for that, look for it on our website. We have a Sign Up Genius. If you have difficulty getting the Sign Up Genius to work for you, please contact Darren in the office and he will find you a slot to come and experience the Stations of the Cross. On Wednesday night at 7 p.m. on Zoom, we will do bread baking with Pastor Bergette. I know most of you know I don't really cook, but I have one thing I do well, and that is this communion bread recipe from Luther Seminary that I will share with you to use in your home for Monday, Thursday, Holy Communion, as well as Easter Sunday morning. We will have Monday, Thursday worship on Zoom at 7 p.m., as well as live streamed on Facebook. And Good Friday will also be 7 p.m. on Zoom and live streamed on Facebook. Easter Sunday morning, we will be in person outside on our West Lawn. Hallelujah. I'm not supposed to say that in Lent, but I think it's okay. Please bring a chair, and if you need assistance with a chair, please let us know. Your own communion elements and whatever weather gear you might need. Right now, the forecast looks good, and we'll continue um, for that to hold. We'll pray for that to continue to hold. We will be meeting at 10 o'clock. We will also be live streaming on YouTube, and it'll automatically upload to view later. There will no longer be this pre-recorded worship service. So to worship with us, to get notified when that YouTube worship uploads, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and receive that notification when Sunday morning worship is available. Also, a note, I will be on medical leave for three weeks. I covet your prayers, but also do not worry. I will be fine. I will be out April 11th, 18th, and 25th, and we have some marvelous guest preachers signed up that you will not want to miss as we begin our sermon series, Faith in Public Life, for the, East, for the season of Easter as we look at the book of Acts. With that, I ask us to take a moment of silence as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Please join me for the call to worship on page four of the bulletin. The story of faith is a story of courage. It took courage for John the Baptist to prepare the way. It took courage for Mary to say, here I am, use me. It took courage for the disciples to drop their nets and follow Jesus. It took courage for the paralyzed man's friends to lower him through the roof. It took courage for Peter to walk on water. It took courage for Zacchaeus to give half of his possessions to the poor. It took courage for Jesus to enter Jerusalem on a donkey. Faith has never been easy. It is a journey of courage. Again and again, God shows us the way. Let us worship a brave and courageous God. Hear our call to confession. Glennon Doyle, whom you may know, is a famous author and writer, and she frequently uses the phrase, we can do hard things. It's one of her many mottos in life. As a result, this declaration, we can do hard things, has become an anthem for so many, particularly in the last year. You can buy these words on poster prints, on greeting cards, and even coffee mugs. So when I stop to think about why they have caught hold for so many, I can only assume that it is because life and faith 
require courage. Vulnerability requires courage. Relationships require courage. Facing our privilege requires courage. Faith requires courage. Even confession requires courage. So friends, let us do hard things. Let us confess together, trusting that God is always there, cheering us on in every courageous act. And let us pray together. God of palm branches and alleluias, we confess. We love a good Palm Sunday celebration. We love the sound of a joyful parade. We love shouting alleluia. We love that Palm Sunday means Easter is just around the corner. We love good news. However, if we slow down and pay attention, we know that Palm Sunday was not a walk in the park for you. There was risk. There was fear. There was the threat of violence. You were leading a peaceful protest against an unjust empire, and the world knew it. Forgive us for glossing over the courage this day took. Remind us that the story of faith is a story of courage. And even we can do hard things. With hope we pray. Amen. Family of faith, even when we gloss over the truth, even when our courage fails us, even when we doubt we can do hard things, God believes in us. God loves us. God forgives us. Hear and believe this truth. We are known. We are loved. We are forgiven. Again and again and again. Amen. Process. Jesus is coming. Pave the way with branches. Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming. Pave the way with branches. Jesus is coming. Hosanna. Hosanna. Jesus is coming. Hosanna to the of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. And let us pray. If we could buy our way closer to you, we'd sell everything we have. If we could work our way closer to you, we would never take a day off. If we could walk our way to you, we'd keep our tennis shoes on tight. But I know, we know, we cannot buy or work or walk our way closer to you. We must listen our way closer to you. So, holy God, as you have so often done again and again, open our ears. Clear out the soft talk that keeps us from you. Dust out the negativity and the distractions. 
Remove any doubt hindering our way. Amen. Our first scripture reading on this Palm Sunday comes from Isaiah, the 50th chapter. Listen for the word of the Lord. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning, he wakens, wakens my ear to listen to those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? All of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from Philippians 2, verses 5 through 11. These verses are known as the Christ hymn and may have been an early church hymn of the early followers of the way or maybe part of a creed that would have been sung in early Christianity worship. Listen for the word of the Lord. And Paul writes, Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself. He became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel acclamation is nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God. gospel for this Palm Sunday comes from Mark 11 verses 1 through 11 is called the triumphal entry glory to you O Lord when they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives he sent two of his disciples and said to them go into the village ahead of you and immediately as you enter it you will find a tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and we'll send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it, many people spread their cloaks on the road, others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the one coming, coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem, went into the temple, and when he had looked around at everything as it was already late, he went out to Bethany 
with the twelve. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The law of inertia is one that many of us learned in middle school or high school. And even if you didn't formally learn it by its scientific name, it's the law of physics that one might call common sense. A body in motion tends to stay in motion and a body at rest tends to stay at rest. If you've ever laid down on the couch after yard work or house cleaning, thinking you'll just take a 15 minute breather only to find an hour later that you're still on the couch, you know what the law of inertia is all about. I'll be intimately familiar with the body at rest wanting to stay at rest, inertia, uh, next Sunday afternoon after Holy Week. It can be hard to get ourselves moving, can't it? Whether it's physically up off the couch or emotionally, psychologically, and spiritually to move our feelings, thinking, and hearts in a new direction. What causes us to be moved, to change, to engage our lives and world differently, to overcome this law of inertia is kind of elusive, isn't it? We've all had the frustration of trying to move ourselves or someone else, a friend or family member, such as to quit drinking or smoking or to change a bad habit. George Barna did a study about 15 years ago now that showed worldview was set by age 13 and values by age nine. Whatever your values and worldview might be entering high school essentially are pretty much concretized. Of course, we might have life experiences that move us to shift those values and worldviews, but usually it's nuanced and not a great upheaval. When people are moved, typically it is due to a personal major traumatic event, isn't it? It's why right now in our national discourse, we have so much tension. We're trying to move people into different worldviews and values with stories and facts that aren't personal to them. It's real experiences, personal and communal, that move people. What moves us? compels us to either physically or spiritually or emotionally change our course and do a new thing is at the heart of our Palm Sunday text. Again, what we call the triumphal entry. As I wrote in my faith talk this week, that title is a bit of a misnomer, but it's what we have to work with. I'm struck by all the ways that Jesus in this text and throughout the Gospels moves people. Jesus leads his disciples to the outskirts of Jerusalem, a city teeming with people celebrating the Passover. He moves two disciples to go get a colt, a young donkey, for which he has obviously planned ahead. Then he moves with the crowds who also are pilgrims to the Passover, entering the holy city, and they are moved to call out Hosanna, which interestingly means save us now. It's not a movement of joy or a movement of celebration that we often project on this story. This is a political movement. This is a movement of people that are recalling that they still are not free. The pilgrims recognize that just as they are entering the city, so are a whole legion of Roman soldiers along with Pontius Pilate. You see, Pilate didn't live in Jerusalem, but out on the coast. And he came in each Passover with his troops as a show of force to the occupied Jews gathered in Jerusalem. Passover was a holy time that celebrated God's movement and action of liberation for the Israelites, and the Roman government didn't want them to get any funny ideas about God moving for them this way again. But Jesus knew exactly what God was up to. Jesus' physical movement from the rural and outlying towns of Galilee into the center of power for the Roman Empire and the temple institution in Jerusalem revealed that God is indeed moving right into the heart of what needs to be confronted and changed. God had come in Jesus to move all people toward God's unconditional love, mercy, and grace, and to move people to recognize one another as worthy of that love and care. Jesus was on the move, not only into Jerusalem, but into people's lives and hearts. Jesus moved right toward that conflict that was coming in Jerusalem, toward the pain, toward the division, toward the unrest. Jesus knew he was moving to the cross, and Jesus moved his disciples to do the same. 
Jesus modeled for the people what it means to be moved, to have your heart and soul moved, not for your own well-being, but for the well-being of all people in creation. Jesus was moved by the lepers outcast. Jesus was moved by the separation of the man unhoused living in the tombs. Jesus was moved by the woman who begged for crumbs from the table. Jesus was moved by the death of his friend Lazarus. Jesus was moved by the hungry and lost crowds on the hill. Jesus was moved to offer his very life for the sake of ending the movement of evil, hate, and death and affirming the movement of God's kingdom come, of wholeness, peace, and abundant life for the world. Jesus moved to move us. Our baptism calls us into this movement. We move to see our lives together as God's church beyond our walls. We move and join the shouts of Hosanna, save us now for our black siblings, for our refugee siblings, for our LBGTQIA plus siblings. We move and say no to economic disparity and poverty. We move to ensure health care is offered for all. We move to keep our society safe from senseless violence. We move to offer our neighbors a tangible experience of God's mercy, wholeness, and love for, that is offered to all people and all creation so that they too will join the movement of Jesus and hope. We move even when we know that path leads through pain, suffering, or even death. We move knowing that we are part of a movement in which the horror of death on a cross moves us to the mystery of the empty tomb, moves us to the promise of new life that stretches out to the ends of the earth. Jesus calls us to follow and move, but reminds us that we do not move alone. God moves with us with a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night so that we move together as the beloved community we are part of the movement of God's kingdom that enters into the heart of what needs to move over for hope, mercy, and grace in this world and for this world. We're part of the movement. Thanks be to God. Our hymn of the day is hymn 336. Lamb of God. <clears throat>
Please join me in the affirmation of faith. I refuse to believe that I am powerless. I refuse to believe that injustice and hatred are simply the way it has to be. I refuse to believe that I am better or more deserving than my neighbor. I refuse to believe that my self-worth is rooted in my accomplishments or appearance. I refuse to believe that the church is dying because I see God all around me. I refuse to believe that the traditions of old are the only path for moving forward. I refuse to believe that I cannot make a difference. So with hope in my heart, I will strive to live a life of courage, conviction, and compassion, just as Jesus taught us. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all and also with you. We come to this time in our worship service where we give thanks for God's generosity and all the ways that God moves us to be part of the Jesus movement that is all around us, which is caring for those in need and bringing wholeness and reconciliation into the world. I invite you to go on our website and see all the ways that we participate with God in that holy movement work. And also we have a giving button on our website. And if you'd like to join that movement, please do so by you can electronically give or you can also set up for automatic um, deposits every, every few weeks or every month, as well as snail mail. We attempt here at Our Saviors to be a spirit-filled community reaching out and caring for all. We continue with the prayers of the people. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. You wash us through and through and remember our sin no more. Make your church a community of forgiveness throughout the world. Give your people courage to forgive. Through them, show the world new possibilities. Bless ministries of repentance and reconciliation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You promise to write your law on our hearts. Guide citizens throughout the world to shape communities that reflect your justice, mercy, and peace, and give them creativity to work for the welfare of all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Restore the joy of all who need to know your presence, those who are lonely or feel unforgivable, those who need healing of mind or body, those who are dying and all who grieve. We pray especially for Lisa, Kinzen, Caleb, Melanie, Jeff, and Karen, and all those whom we name now out loud or in our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we move now to this table, this table that Christ sets, this table from which the movement continues from us out into the world so all are sustained, all are included, all are loved. If you are gathered with us for this worship, you are part of this movement of love from Jesus Christ. It is for you. You need a bit of cracker or bread and some wine or grape juice. And we hear the story from the week of our Lord's passion. When he was gathered with his disciples in that upper room in Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover meal for the last time with his friends. That meal where they recalled God's movement in action for liberation and reconciliation and hope in the world. And it's the night that Jesus would be betrayed by Judas Iscariot. As part of that meal, Jesus took the bread, gave thanks for it, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, Jesus took the cup. 
and blessed it and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And gathered as one people by the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We will now uh, participate in communion together. You may now serve one another in your household by offering each other the bread or the cracker and saying the body of Christ given for you, and then offering one another the cup saying the blood of Christ shed for you. If you are a household of one, you and I will commune together right now. The body of Christ. blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. If you are still communing one another in your household, continue to do so while you receive this blessing. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forevermore. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number 338, Beneath the Cross of Jesus. We will do verses 1 and 2. As you leave this space, may your mouth speak of God's goodness. May your arms hold those in need. May your feet walk toward justice. May your heart trust its worth. May your soul dance in God's grace. And may this be your rhythm again and again and again until God's promised day. In the name of the lover and the beloved and of love itself, go with courage Go with heart, go in peace and be moved. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us on this Palm Sunday. We invite you into the journey of Holy Week with Stations of the Cross, Home Devotions, and our Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday Liturgy. Come celebrate the open tomb, the empty tomb, the mystery of new life with us on April 4th at 10 a.m. on our West Lawn. 
Peace be with you.